Okay, Larry, I am curious. Why so tired? Oh no, I was up late last night. I have a I have a uh 19-year-old who is leaving for college in uh less than a week. So we were uh we were busy. What college? Oh, he's going to the University of British Columbia. So in addition wow. to oh, sending him out of oh. state, we are dealing with the um fact that he's going to be an international student in Canada. That's great. I have That's a very fabulous. friend who's a, an attorney in Toronto. So if you ever need any kind of anything Canada wise, I got a connection for you. Seriously. That will be helpful. Thank you. Oh, really, really. Uh, so that, that's a real offer. Uh, let's see. Bruce Miller joined. Hi, Bruce Panina. Good to see you. Shabbat Shalom. Brucha Hoseret. It's good to see you back. I see Mara, not Harv. That seems to be somewhat usual. Cindy, hi. Uh, is your princess with you or? Still asleep. Uh, oh, okay. We'll move quickly then. <laughs> horrible. Yeah, we'll move quickly. Uh, calendar. Uh, here's the, the tough news. When when the Rabbi Shapiro announced it last night, he kind of turned pale. Um, Friday evening, August 26th, Saturday, August 27th, is Rosh Chodesh Elul. Uh, Elul is the last month of the Jewish calendar. So why would a pulpit rabbi turn pale when he suddenly <laughs> realized that next week is the beginning of the last week, last month of the year. Time That's to write your a a panic time. Before. Yeah, and all I did at that point was go, oh, okay, sure, go ahead. I'll be ready to listen. So that was <laughs> nice. Hi, D.D. Shulman, good to see you. Good, good, good. Um, or hear you or see you there. Jim Ruxin, uh, Saturday evening, August 27th. What do you have? Can't hear you. Um, sorry to say, I don't know what we're going to be screening, but it will be something. I've been watching lots of films, and uh, it gets harder and harder to, to decide, but we'll do something fun, I think, this time, um, and very interesting. So I'll send out an email to everybody uh, by Monday. Okay. Thanks you for that. I want an excuse to see uh, what was that one about the uh, the Vietnam jungle and there's this emperor uh, who's deep in the jungle. Apocalypse now. Apocalypse now. Thank you, Steve. Uh, I need an excuse to see apocalypse now. I yearn for it, um, but. It, just, it, it it has not aged well. It's still very mixed up, but it's impressive. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cindy, what do we have? Um, well, Susie can talk about our Shabbat dinner at Froman's next Friday. Um, we're going to ha have a happy hour Zoom on September 8th featuring the Jews in history of Vienna. And we're having a wonderful Sukkot lunch with amazing speakers on October 16th at the Irmis campus. And everyone is welcome at all these events. It's not just for sisterhood or not just for women. So Susie, if you want to talk about Fromans. Yes, 6 p.m. next Friday night, August 26th, Fromans in Santa Monica. Everybody is welcome. And if you are by yourself and you want to bring a, a friend, that's fine too. I just need to know in the next couple of days um, when um, that you're going to be able to come. And it's no, a no host dinner. There are individual checks. I set everything up so that we can somewhat celebrate besides schmoozing. I We'll have a holla, we'll have wine, we will have good conversation, we will say some prayers and enjoy Shabbat dinner at six o'clock at Romans. I think 
That's terrific. Very, very good. Thank you. I see Barbara now. Hi, Barbara. Shabbat Shalom. Tamara has just entered. Uh, oh, Bruce. Hi. And and please, uh, please remember, if I don't have your email address, we are uh, Gary Gartsman. Hi. There we are. Well, that's that's better than whatever. Uh, the I do want your email addresses. We are having a happy little burst of growth in our class and our community. And I want to make sure that I can still be in touch with everybody. So, so please make certain that I do have uh, everything. Hi, Eric in New York, uh, Natalie. Okay, we're going to get started. Um, so in terms of checking in, um, Risa and I celebrated our 59th anniversary Whoa. on Thursday. So that's, that definitely is a checking in thing. Uh, and wow. when we asked the kids what kind of really large event, which we deserve, they would be throwing for us, they said, 59th, wait till 60. <laughs> OK. Okay, so it goes. Anyway, so we did celebrate that, and that's been a lot of fun. Uh, any other checking in, please? Things happening in your lives? Uh, uh, we, we heard from Larry that he's sending a grandson off to British British Columbia. Uh, son. Pardon? Son. Son to British Columbia. <laughs> uh, does he play yeah. hockey? Does he play hockey? Lacrosse. Well, that's good. Cool. Yeah, oh, that'll close work. That'll work. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and he's my baby, so we're about to become empty nesters. Uh, I'm always willing to be adopted, Larry. Let's talk. Okay. <laughs> we, we'll, we'll have room after next week. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Any other, any other? Um... Yes. I'm not as impressive right there. as you and Risa. But Mona and I are celebrating our 45th anniversary tomorrow. Wow. Wow. That's so tough. That's so tough. wow, wow, wow. Call a kabod to Mona. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Congratulations. Uh, we are off for a trip. This is the third time we've tried this, and um, we're off to Italy on Monday for a month. Wow. What? Great. Wow. 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 Yeah. So, so I won't say I may tune in, I, you know, depending upon the time, maybe it'll work out and I can tune in if we're not too busy. Look, <laughs> I'm too busy for tourist study. Yes. That I knew works. you'd say that. I knew you'd say that. <laughs> okay. Okay. I got that. Uh, if I can tune in from a cruise ship, you can certainly do it from Italy. Absolutely. <laughs> and besides, with Switzerland, Italy, Periodically, Honolulu, we have a new way of advertising our community, which I. That's you know, right. That's it. That is just amazing. Straddling the globe. Okay, we are into the Cedra of uh, Akev. We're going to turn to, um, let's see, Deuteronomy 8 1, page 1229, 1229 in the New Plout, and 1094 in the WRJ. Uh, Thursday night, I, I, I don't usually like advertise this, but I posted um, a Stanley David sticking his big toe into the possibility of discussing theodicy and the justice of God. And I made a little bit of a proposal at the end of that Rather brilliant now. No, the 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 study that I did. If you have the time, it would be great if you could pick this up either on uh, Facebook or YouTube, whatever. I would love your comments back uh, on what I called aspirational theodicy, and if you have thoughts about it, up, down, or sideways. Uh, I need to learn from you, and it's a real request. So if you have 12 minutes uh, over the next week or so, please look at it and 
share your responses and be your typical self. Don't be kind to me. Just, <laughs> just. You're on me nine. Yeah, well, let, let me know what you think because I'm really, I'm trying. Uh, and we'll see what, what happens with that. Okay, Where's chapter right? 8, verse 1 of Deuteronomy. You shall faithfully observe all the instruction that I enjoined upon you this day. The Hebrew word for instruction is mitzvah. That's a strange translation from mitzvah to instruction. Sometimes the translator will translate Torah as instruction. But here you take the kol ha-mitzvah all the mitzvah that I am commanding you, okay? The translator gives it instruction. Very interesting. Uh, it's very contemporary. Rabbis no longer are able to stand up in front of a congregation and use any sentence that begins with thou shalt or thou shalt not. You don't do that anymore. You have to be more in tune of in tune of with people's feelings. If you are really in the right place, murder just may not be something which we Jews do a lot of. You know, I kind of soften it. In any event, took out mitzvah, command, put in instruction that I enjoin upon you this day, same word, mitzvah, that I mitzvah you this day. A favorite phrase of mine, tish marun la'asot, shomer. What is the meaning of the word? Shomer. I thought it meant guard. Okay. Totally correct as a noun. It means guard, a guard. There was a, a group of pre-state um, uh, self-defense people in Israel called Shomrim, the guards. Shomer is in, as a verb to keep, to keep, but to keep diligently, to really observe. Shomer, and then it's attached to the word la'asot. Shomer, and then it's attached to the word la'asot. Shomer, and then it's attached to the word la'asot. Shomer, and then it's attached to the word Am I hearing myself? Yeah. Yeah. Somebody's on. Yeah. Somebody's on two devices. Somebody's on. I think everybody should mute themselves. Okay, stand please, and re -mute. please, everybody mute for a moment. Everybody should mute themselves. Mute, please. Please, everybody mute for a moment. Please mute. Okay, I'll, please, everybody. Ah, it's still there. Please, everybody mute. Okay, please, everybody. It's still there. Please, everybody All right, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try, and please just raise your hand, I'll see it, I promise, and uh, and and tomorrow will help me find the hand, hands raised, uh, and, and we'll be able to do that. Uh, Panina, yesh lach sheila? You have to unmute. Hi, okay, the word shomer also means uh, to be protected. You protect somebody. Yes. So. So if you keep the mitzvot, it gives you a certain way of protection. That is, you know, exactly. Uh, by the way, one of the all-time worst foods in Jewish history is shmura matzah, uh, the, the matzah that is tightly supervised by the Orthodox authorities, and uh, it is tightly kept. Fine. Now, 
Uh, sir? Yes. The instructor in the Civil Service Society in New York, the Shamreem, the Shamreem Society is the Jewish Police Officers Society of the Civil Service. Okay, and there are show, there's actually, if I'm correct, Eric, there's a Jewish police organization in New York, which is yes. Shomrim. Yes. Okay, fine. Now, so keeping the mitzvah, shomering the mitzvah doesn't mean to be aware. It means to keep, to really keep, and that means la'asot, to do. Keeping requires doing. So if you are keeping Shabbat, it means that you are doing things for Shabbat and so forth. So it's a very, it's a lovely phrase. It's a connecting observance and, and intentionality, which really works well. Uh, now, there is an attitude in Deuteronomy. We know it. It is, as they say in Yiddish, quid pro quo. It is, you do, you get. It is very important to understand that in the typical theology of Deuteronomy, every place you go, there is a strong assertion that if you do, you get the reward. If you violate, you get the punishment. God is a God of black and white justice. And you find that everywhere in Deuteronomy. Needless to say, it causes much trouble later on. Uh, and look what it says here. If you shomer la'asot, if you observe it so that you can do laman tichyu, so that you may have chayim, so that you may live. What's the point? If you do mitzvot, you will live, and you will multiply and enter the land which God has promised. Amen. What do you think about that as theodicy, divine justice? Any problems with that? Or is it pretty much a slam dunk? Yeah, we agree. Uh, okay, Howard. The big problem is that it very often doesn't work. It's manifestly false. Something that's divinely dis declared to be true can't be false, but it, on a normal level, it would be considered to be false. But in, that, in fact, what you have to do is come up with reasons to explain why, although it seems to be false, that actually it's true, contrary to reality as that may seem. I don't know, Howard, if there is a greater religious problem than the problem of theodicy, God's justice. How, no matter how you view God, how does God function in your life and what is the relationship between what you do and how you live and how you are rewarded? Um, Ladies and gentlemen, I am going to do the unusual if, if my note uh, is correct. Let's just see. Wait one second. This is a moment. Uh, okay. Please note that Arthur Ashur, A-S-H-O-U-R, has joined our group. And I just, I met Arthur last night and he asked me whether, oh, entered the waiting room, I have to admit him. So uh, Arthur Ashur came up to me Friday evening and asked if we have any Torah study at Wilshire, he just joined. So uh, Arthur, if you can hear me, and I hope, I think you can because you checked in, Baruch Abba, we will, Take the time to come to know you, and we're delighted to welcome you to our community. Everybody say hello, Arthur. Hi, Arthur. Hello, Arthur. Okay. Hi. Hi, Arthur. Very good. Now, going back, 
There is no question more troubling than God's justice. Whatever we postulate as an understanding about what God is and how we relate to God, you bump up immediately against theodicy. How many times have we said in our lives, a child, this happens to a child, a good person, this happens to a good person, a miserable person who lives a life of reward? How many times have we said that? Where is divine justice? For most of us, no. For most of the people not in our Hebra Torah, they're going to go through life trying not to think about this. We can't. It's a challenge. I have two hands up, but I, I let's see, Donna? Yes, um, I was going to say that God looks in our hearts, and we're only human. Rabbi Leader was talking about Shabbat, uh, we're all, the, to be human, and God's compassion. But if we try to honor the Torah and love to listen to the Torah and study and try to obey, we're frail, we're weak, and then we, when we get weak, we go, oh, Lord, I don't want to do that. Run into the arms of God. Run to say Torah. I can't wait to get to shul. I can't wait to listen to you talk about the Torah. So if you love the Torah, God, it's like right back at you. God's going to love you. He knows our hearts. Okay, Sukasa. This relates to what you said before, and that um, we have a responsibility in Judaism to do, as you said, to keep the values of Judaism and to do. We can't just, versus Christianity, which is a religion of faith. All you have to do to be a good Christian is to have faith that Jesus is the personification of God and so forth. You don't have to do anything to be a good Christian. So I think it makes it a lot harder to be Jewish, but I agree with you that it's a lot harder to have faith in God if something happens to a child or you get a disease and you're a good person and you study Torah and you do tikkun olam. So it is a, it is a conundrum. Mm -hmm. it, is, it is that. It is a conundrum. And mm -hmm. it's inescapable. And some of you who've been studying with me for a long time know I've grown somewhat impatient with uh Trust and it'll all work out. And I, I, I am not there. I, I have been unable in my view of human existence to see the phrase I use Thursday evening. Does the arc of the universe bend toward justice? I wish I had delivered that sermon that Martin Luther King delivered, but if I if I had been there, I would have been cheering and yelling and because it would have been very emotional. But I don't believe it. I don't believe that the universe bends toward justice. I believe that that is an ongoing challenge of every single human being in this room to make justice happen, but to assume that it is the divine will, and I know that I'm upsetting some people, and I do care, but to say that it's the divine will for justice to triumph is beyond where I can comfortably go now, and you know me, I'm putting it out there. Okay, Sukasa, what did you say? The universe bends toward selfishness. Oh, <laughs> okay, you, you, you flip a little bit past where I am. Okay, I see hands. I see Howard. Um, the, Howard. For, for, the, the, way this, the way this is often put is, um, is that uh, God's, God has a plan, 
but but sometimes but God is far more powerful and, uh, than we are and very often we're not able to understand his plan but that we have faith but we know that God loves us and in the end everything will be for the best and God will take care of us provided we are, are, are behave well and these are two totally mutually contradictory statements if once the statement on the other side of this card is false, it's that kind of thing. If one of them is true, the other one is false. If that one is true, the other one is false. They can't both be true. In my opinion. Oh, uh, you know, you put the conundrum out there, Mara or Harv, I don't know which. I, I guess I was going to respond to what uh, Rabbi Eskenazi posted concerning Deuteronomy saying, speaking about the community, not about the individual. That, and I guess I want to pose the question of if no matter what I do, I'm dependent on the community and it's extraordinarily likely that the community is not going to be entirely just, then why should I bother at all? Why shouldn't I just care about me and, and not about all of these commandments? So this is the last week of Chavra Torah and it's really nice and we're, <laughs> we're toast. Um, uh, thank you. I mean, that Harriet, Natalie, Natalie, I see Natalie. Okay. Well, if you think about it, all good behavior, there is a basis underlying it of fear. If you take it right down to children going to school, they obey the teacher because they're afraid if they do not, the teacher will not like them, be angry with them. You listen to your parents when you're young. Also, the fear of love being taken away from you. You go to school, you do your homework, you want to get a good mark on the test because you think if you don't do that, you will not get what you the rewards of what that test is going to bring so if you think about it what deuteronomy is saying here is that there you better be afraid of me god if you don't follow the torah and all my rules you're going into this new land you better listen to me rather than well, you know, be very, very like, um, not so strong about it. What he's it's saying here too, is if you do these things, good things will happen to you. But my point is, is that is the basis of a lot of people listening and obeying in a civilized world, if you think about it. That's the basis is fear, is something bad will happen to me if I don't follow instructions so i'd like to hear what everybody has to say we about are that. getting some incredible comments i see merle and then i see eric and then arthur so I, i'm i'm listening to all this and i'm thinking about what you said thursday night what i heard last night at our services here and everything and yesterday's torah study you know yesterday afternoon with rabbi leader and and i kind of think you know this uh, this is all part of the doing thing, but what is doing? I mean, everybody has a different opinion of what doing is. I believe, I think, I hope in the most part that those of us who participate in one way or another, not everybody can do Torah study, not everybody can do, be at synagogue. Last night, you know, we had flash flood warnings here. So we did a lot of Zoom. Um, in whatever way you choose to participate, my hope is that you're making the effort to do, to do something, you know, to, to practice your Judaism 
listen to Torah, interpret. I mean, Torah is an interpretation and in how people choose to live their lives. It's a guidebook, theoretically, but it's also how we choose to follow that guidebook and the Ten Commandments and everything that goes along with it. But then every once in a while, you come across somebody in that community who, not in this one, who are totally against, they're there, but then it goes back to what Sukasa said. They're there for their own selfishness. Are they really a part of the community or are they, are they, um, they're just there because they feel guilty that they have to be there for, a, for to say Kaddish or because their kid or grandchildren are being bar or bat mitzvah or whatever the situation might be. I mean, did somebody guilt them into their participation? And that's the other end of, you know, you, the people you don't know and you don't see anywhere, why are they there? That's so my big question. The, these are power, you yeah. are doing great. The power of the problem, why be Jewish? Why have a pattern of observance? Why do we choose to do what we choose to do? And in today's world, being an unconscious follower of that's the way it's always been isn't selling good. Okay, Eric, and, and then, okay, Eric, please. And then, uh, and then we will get uh, to Arthur. Uh, Eric, I can't hear you. Okay, I got to unmute. Okay, we, we, do you ever hear me? Aruch Hashukan or Kayim 19 that you leave the reference. And it said, We have been commanded to walk along God's path of goodness and righteousness. As the verse said, You shall travel in His ways. Furthermore, it says, After that, and all your God shall go. And furthermore, it says, To walk only in divine path. Like we are the partners, just the partners with God, like Uber, to do, do His work on, on, on earth as best we can. I love the comment about partners with God. I absolutely love that. Arthur, please. Because I, because I don't remember when I read I Endowed by Boober many years ago. It says fades wow. away from my memory. Yeah. Arthur, please. Hi, everybody. Uh, I am new here, and I am not quite familiar with the procedure that you are conducting. Uh, but in my point of view, uh, God is not just. It is beyond just. This is the, the difference between Shia and Sunni in Muslim. Shia believes that God is just, just, but Sunnis do not talk about it. It doesn't mean that they do not believe that God is not just. They also believe that God is beyond just. This is my point of view. Thank you, and welcome, Baruch Abba. We're going to learn from you, and this is great. Welcome, welcome. I see Panina, please. Okay. Okay, I think the whole idea was to form a nation, and because there is strength in numbers. They were in Egypt, they were few, they were persecuted there, they became slaves. What makes a nation? It's a group of people who believes in in a, the same thing or being forced to believe in the same thing. Um, and there was always a power struggle and um, not being on your own land was a part of um, being weak. So I think the whole idea was they were given a country, they were given a place where they were supposed to take care of, walk the land and form the connection to the land because being a wandering people in other places, they were vulnerable. The whole idea was to give them strength in numbers and strength in believing in justice and to be the teachers to the rest of the world. So the rest of the world is going to look at that little place and see how people live um, considering other people, welcoming other people from other, pe from other uh, nations because they brought the Egyptians with them. The people who chose to, to, to join in, to belong. And again, 
it's giving them the tools to be strong and united in one place and to encourage it, to teach them how to do it and how I to be think, considered of one another to survive. Panino, and that's, I think, the whole idea Panino, of the Torah is. When you mention giving the tools, I think that is a powerful statement. Yes. That giving the tools is not the same thing as, <clears throat> choose me, guaranteeing God's protection. Giving the tools puts the responsibility on the people who Absolutely. pick up the tools. That's a really, really great comment. Uh, okay, I want to move on. Do we have anything new uh, to be offered? Uh, um, Rabbi, may I, Rabbi, I say community is um, uh, community is so important, and the love in this temple. Um, I am working on musicals to go entertain people with uh, Parkinson and Alzheimer's from the they're like from the 1950s, the war songs and everything. It's a convalescent home, and Cindy and I were talking about it, reaching out and forgetting your troubles and helping other people through music. And loving your neighbor when you love God. I think that's the commandments. That's what we're trying to do at Wilshire Boulevard Temple. Well, I come back because of the love. The celebration of your anniversary, 59 years, just last night was so precious. I just want to say that because that's what this is all about. It's about community. To obey the commandments that we have, they're not difficult if we just love one another. Let me, let me just... Let me just share with you a very, very personal item, very personal, which I've kept in my heart and haven't said out loud to anyone. I am increasingly required to use a walker. I tip over, fall over, whatever I do to make myself obnoxious. And I became aware of how isolating that was. In the last several months, I've made it my business to offer words of greeting to other people with walkers or in wheelchairs, just to say, how are you doing? Or, or depending on the person, do you want to race? <laughs> you know, uh, whatever. Oh, whatever no. But I was able to find in disability a tool to help reach out to other people. Hallelujah. And, and I have never said this to anyone. And, and I'm not even comfortable saying it here, but it's true. I'm so frightened. Okay. So please, folks, we need people to be uh, muted because there's feedback coming in. Please, please mute. Merle? I'm, re I'm responding to your comment about the walker. Hidden disabilities are a big issue. And I have been, I guess, teased, bullied, whatever, about my having to use a cane. And in many cases, also having to use a walker. I had just had to upgrade my walker to the next level. And um, I do everything I can possibly do. You know, I, I, I haven't cut out anything in my life. There's things I've had to change. But what I found really interesting many years ago, when I started using a walker at camp at Hess Kramer, I found that the kids were extremely understanding and the campers and staff, obviously, but the campers were incredibly, not just understanding, but helpful. If I had to you know, park my walker by a platform that I had to walk up three steps and then we were done with the program and I'd go down, the kids would run to get my walker. The kids would always be there, you know, walking back from the chapel to the dining hall 
Do you need help? Do you want, you know, do you want to ride? And I think we're teaching, we're teaching our kids the right things about sensitivity so that we don't have to be embarrassed about it. But okay. I've also, my bullying gonna, has been from adults and that's what's frightening. Okay, I'm gonna jump right in here and connect all that we've been saying. I don't need a reward from God to validate my decision to engage in a brief hello with other people who are having difficulties locomoting. I don't need that. What I love is an upward glance from the wheelchair and sometimes a smile. The reward is not a guarantee of my long life, good health, prosperity, or, you know, no rain on a picnic day. The reward is people, you have said it, right? You said it, building community, building relationships of love. That's a big deal. Now, I, I, I want to move on just because this is way too interesting and I have to leave it. Deuteronomy speaks of God with a spreadsheet. God, this is the first public statement of an Excel. You have an Excel. You know, God is, you know, maybe God has a, a, a department of, of bookkeeping and there are angels. I don't know if angels have ears with, so they can put pens behind their ears, but, uh, and it is a view that not only I reject, but so many of us who live reject. It's not what happens. Not only is it not what happens, it's not what I need. It would be great if every time I do something good, there's a coin dropping in a box somewhere and I'm gonna end up rich living on an island and the whole coin, it ain't gonna happen. I don't believe that the universe arcs toward justice. People, you, someone said instruments, using what we can do to make the world a better place, I mean. that moves the arc. That moves the arc, not the yeah. other. Now, now uh, there's a, qu a question that comes up in the, po the portion today. Every, it says all the every commandment which I command you, keep it. And the rabbis ask, does that mean you have to do a bulk of the commandments? Or is the fact that it's in the singular a comment, call ha mitzvah? Even one at a time is good. Very interesting. And the rabbis in the Talmud bring up things like, well, the Israelites got a big reward for bringing up Joseph's bones from Egypt. And the moment those bones were brought to the promised land, the mitzvah was completed. And that's a good thing. You understand what they were saying? Sometimes if we're engaged in a project, and, and you folks, I know you by now, you are engaged in projects to make the world a better place. Those rabbis were saying to us, do it. Do your housing, do your uh, poverty, do your racism, do your feminism, do your gender, do it. Protect democracy while you're at it. Uh, and do it well. 
And in the eyes of the eternal bookkeeper, that's great. It's not going to be, oh, you did a great job on racism, but boy, last job as you were driving around town. That's not what they understood God's justice to mean, even if in Deuteronomy, it sort of felt that way. Steve Miller, I'm ranting. I'm um, this is important. In terms of finishing the mitzvah, I think it's dangerous to focus on that too much because much of what we do is engaging in conduct toward an end that we know will not be achieved in our lifetime. And if you focus too much on finishing the job, you lose the incentive to work toward what you can do toward the ultimate goal. I accept that totally. Me, I accept that totally. Stick with the task, even though it is not achievable in your lifetime. But if it's worthy, do it. Devote your life, do it. And according to some of the rabbis, that's a guarantee for divine favor. Yes, Steve, thank you. Uh, we're going to move on. And, okay, great. Oh, this is, this is great. It's interesting because the rabbis differ. Do, do you, have you ever seen the Tefillin Tank of Chabad? Tefillin Tank, literally. Have you seen the Tefillin Tank? It's a mitzvah tank, mitzvah tank. Oh, that, it is that too. It depends on what's, who's writing what on the outside of the little pickup truck. Oh, okay. It's a mitzvah yeah. tank. Yeah. So what's the point of the mitzvah truck, Howard? Well, partly to increase the, the merit of the people that are driving the truck. Yes, it is. Come inside, said the rabbi to the fly. Come inside and do a mitzvah. Do one. Put on tefillin. That's all we're asking. Do one. Not the maximalist position. And the rabbis, the big name rabbis, fight over this. Ramban Nachmanides, the great mystic teacher, opponent to Rambam Maimonides, Ramban was a maximalist. He liked more, more, more. Fine. But a lot of us are not maximalists. What I guess my intense reaction to chapter 8, verse 1, verse 2, Don't get trapped into do it all or it's not worthwhile. Do what you can. And the, there's a statement in, in Pirkei Avot. Do you remember this one? Lo almanaflika bail pros. Don't do things so you can get a reward. No. Do things because they're right. Right on, Rabbi. Do things because that becomes a building block, another brick in the wall. That becomes a building uh -huh. block for the kind of world you want to see. That should be reward enough. Do we really need a promise? That's why a month from now, five weeks, technically. We're going to be in synagogue. Who shall live and who shall die? Who by fire? Who by water? Who by famine? Etc. Two things are interesting about that prayer. One, it was written in the Middle Ages when flood, famine, fire, disease were omnipresent. And the description of the author was of the world 
within which the author lived. All around the author, people were dying from flood, from famine, from disease, from this, from that, from war. Second, I don't want to spend the rest of my life trying to excuse a theology and a theodicy with which I am absolutely in disagreement. I don't believe that God determines who shall live, who shall die, who by fire, who by water. And quite frankly, I don't care. What I care about is a group of people just like you who are committed to sharpening your minds with Torah wisdom and creating a better world. If we can do that together, that's massive. I'm going to take, because there have been several hands up, uh, and the chat has been pounding. Merle, what good does the reward do in the end? One's eulogy will be too late for the path. Oh, your cynicism is delightful. Tamara, I think the answer for why act justly in Deuteronomy is also based on the next verse, gratitude for what was given to us. Part of what we do, I never used this phrase before, but my daughter, many decades ago, middle child, started talking about paying a debt forward. Have you heard that expression? When something good happens to you or someone, whatever, the best response is paying it forward. Taking a good feeling and helping that motivate you to be good to somebody else. Paying it forward. What a great, I, I think, a great expression. Merle, Rebecca, yes, grateful. Hopefully, whatever we can get others to join us. We are lucky that someone had the idea to create assisting devices. <laughs> yeah. Uh, except that it gets competitive. Someone said to me the other day, oh, you have a Mercedes. Really? I have a four-wheel push thing. I never called it a Mercedes. But... Uh, Okay, okay, very good. Uh, we are we are sadly moving toward the end of what today is all going to be. Uh, Rabbi, may I just say one thing? The way you wear your yarmulke, the way you sip your tea. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> God bless you and research. Okay. All right. <laughs> um, uh, please understand that the whole issue of theodicy is occupying rabbis for the last 2,500 years, but you have explanations. Why are you suffering? It's a test sent by God. Oh, okay. That's why I'm in pain. That's why I have a head shake. No, it's not what I can believe, and it's not what I accept, and it is a cheap way theologically to buy oneself out of what was called this morning already a conundrum, a conundrum. In the real world, righteous people bleed, evil people succeed. Oh, that rhymes. I'll have to think about that. Okay. Uh, in the real world, the good don't automatically win. It's okay to say that and still believe in God and the mission of Judaism. It is okay to be able... Howard, you're going to challenge. Go ahead, throw it at me, Howard. No, not really challenging. I, I, I think, I just, to me, it, although it says in the Torah, um, who, God determines who shall live, who shall die, etc. It also says 
the Lord, the Lord is with me. I cannot fear. So it's the opposite. And, and they're, you know, so you have to take a sin in your mind, in your soul, you have to absorb both of those uh, things. Wisdom. I like it. And let me just conclude by saying this. When I'm with you, I'm never alone. You collectively, I'm never alone. I do feel that periodically when I remember to be nice to someone, which is not always the case, periodically, when I remember to be nice, I also don't feel alone. There is a statement, maybe this is why you were created. To do this nice thing, a tikkun thing, a fixing, a repair, an apology, hard to do, important, changing, always possible. I don't need God to do that for me so I can get a reward. It's because I think that's why I exist. Period. But is that rooted in Judaism? I mean, why do you need your religion if that's your fundamental belief? I'm sorry, Steve, we're out of time. <laughs> Gives uh, you a little push. <laughs> no, no, it's a huge question. For me, not a question. I so deeply respect and honor what our tradition has created in terms of moral and ethical awareness. It supports me always. I am, I live with quotes from Pirkei Avot and the Gomorrah and the Midrash and this and that. It, they guide me. They strengthen me. And part of being Jewish is forming community so we can support each other in shared ethical moral visions. Amen. That's, that's why. Could others do it in other ways, in other settings? Okay. Good for them. I am blessed with what I have discovered in my life, Steve. That's me. Uh, we're going to stop being involved, stop caring, no more talking. Uh, we're going to start. We'll have to do, we'll want to do uh, Kaddish. I, I just want to end again. It is such a delight to welcome increasing numbers of students to Hebrew Torah. And please reach out. Let people know that our screen permits two sets of pictures. We can take more. Uh, it's wonderful. We mentioned those who have passed away during the past month. Hermal Schuld, Winifred Beck, Sonny Sanford, Brody, Marion Brown, uh, Stephen Chorna, Harold Eisen, Yvette Fisher, Lawrence, Judah, Ganender, Ellen Coleman, Gertrude Klein, Shirley Coton, Joyce Strathner Lins, Pearl Loderman, Catherine Newmark, Mo Austin, Bobby Pearson. And the following the anniversaries of whose deaths have occurred during the past week Aaron Arnold, Irving Bassman, Henry Baum, Charles Bendit, Joyce Benfield, Harold Burl Fine, Ann Bernstein, Pauline Bernstein, William Bernstein, Norton uh, Beinenfeld. Irene Coden Black, Brennan Bastani, Marjorie Ann Beauville, Lee Burns, Doris Calderon, Linda Lee Chesler, Earl Cohn, Bernard Cohn, Alvin Edgar Cohn, Jenny Cohn, Henriette Darlin, Zena Davis, Irving Eigler, Max Feidelson, Sophie Feldman, Norman Fields, Mild Millard Fleischer, Edna Florence, Ben Frankel, Mig Freudenthal, Sonia Friedman, Francis Glass, Sadie Greenberg, Maury Grossberg, 
Betty Lois Halper, Nicole Ann Harrow, Robert Hazlett, Elizabeth Hecht, Edward Hyman, Myra Holtzman, Norman Jacobson, Kathy Jacobson, Johanna Kahn, Kahn, Hannah Kaplan, Jack Kent, Bell Kessler, Sarah Cohn, Hyman Kosman, Roger Cosberg, Jean Kunish, Raymond Lackman, Sandra Lise Lerner, Margaret Lee Sack, Harry Levison, Esther Levy, Chuck Levy, Florence Lewin, Edward Lewis, Leonard Lindy, Stephen Litt, Leon Leubman, Sandy Lockheim, Ethel Luzabnik, uh, Sandra Lurry, Jerry Lushing, Justine Mandelbaum, Jack Morton Matlock, Harry Miner, Jack Miner, Pauline Menine, Helen Miller, Bessie Miller Bodick, Leonard Mills, Ruth Mogul, Marge Moore, Lillian Ott, Eli Persky, Charles Eli E. L. Phillips, Soretta Portnoy, Lawrence Michael Power, Betty Predovich, Thelma Passer Rubin, Emily Richards, Rona Rose Richmond, Morris Robin, Max Rose, Harold Royce, Jenna Rubens, Francoise Ruddy, Barnett Sanders, Eva Sanders, Joseph Sandler, Jack Schuster, Saletta Schwartz, Irving Schwartz, Fanny Groben Schwartz, Barbara Irene Schello, Rhoda Schrelo, Marty Siegel, Samuel Sills, William Smirling, Betty Strauss, Benjamin Teitelman, Isaac Ullman, Molly Wagner, Julia Wasserman, Clifford Weitz, Charles Wesley, Jean Whitney, Harry Wolf Jr., Bud York, and William Young, Elaine Zane. I apologize for the names I have mispronounced and that we have omitted names. Please speak those names aloud now. Kathy Weiss. We bear in mind all the names of our departed. We mentioned those who died in defense of the United States, died in defense of the state of Israel, those who died through senseless acts of terror and murder, those who have no one to say Kaddish for them. We join together. Yitkadal. Amen. May God who makes peace in the high places make peace in our hearts. Make peace in our homes. Make peace in the household of Israel. <coughs> make peace Amen. among all the families and nations of earth. And let us say, Amen. Amen. What a wonderful community we have, ladies and gentlemen. What a wonderful family. Love you all. Have Love a you. great Shabbat. Have a great week. Uh, Tufan, take care of your kids. Uh, Shabbat. Be well, everybody. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Happy anniversary. Bye. Be well. Bye. Love you. Have a great week. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Hi, Susie.